Hey guys, sorry about that. There was like a, it wouldn't let me go live and then it all of a sudden just let me go live. So I'm just waiting for all of you to do roll call and check in to see. I'll give you all about five minutes to log in. We have a lot to do with definitions. There's 39 words. So make sure you grab a pen and a lot of paper. Yeah, you're gonna need a lot of paper if you wanna do one definition. I would just grab a spiral if I were you, honestly. Don't forget these have to be handwritten. And make sure whenever you're doing the handwritten assignments that you also write the name, your name and the date. I just wanted to remind y'all I got an email of a person trying to turn in their assignment and they had a weird like username. So I didn't, I didn't know who the student was and they didn't even put their name on the paper. So just make sure that y'all, yes, Allison said she has a new spiral, awesome. So just make sure y'all put whenever y'all are turning an assignment, your name on the top. And make sure that you get out not only a piece of paper, but the definitions that Kim went over. So we're, I'm doing the definitions to the words that Kim went over from the 10 to 11. If you weren't at the 10 to 11, that's completely fine. Um, you can just follow along with us. Miranda said, I've gone through three spirals. <laughs> I feel that there has been a lot of notes, which is awesome. Lots of notes means lots of learning. So I'll give you all a few minutes to do roll call, first, last name, school, and time that you're clocking in, and then make sure you get out a pen or pencil, a spiral notebook, and with that spiral notebook or another piece of paper um, with the definitions to the definitions to um, Kim's words this morning. So. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're just logging in. Give you all about one more minute to sign in. All right, let's see who we have here. Yes, um, Baldwin said, please make sure you have your notes in a binder to turn in upon your return to school. So yes, you are going to have to turn in those notes. So all those three spirals that you used, keep them because we're going to have to turn them in and put them in your files. So we do need all of the notes that you take, even the little sticky notes. So make sure that you are keeping them nice and organized and keeping them away from harm's, harm's way. I know the dog ate my homework is far fetched, but sometimes it happens. Accidents happen. So, all right, we are gonna get started. So the first definition we have right here, grab it, is tanning. Tanning is excessive exposure to the sun. A lot of us actually tan. I know a lot of us right now, since there's not a lot going on, we're tanning. What tanning is basically is it's, it's hurting your skin. So tanning is actually very bad for you. So tanning. All right, definition number two. Is lentigenous. or what they are known as are freckles, small colored spots on parts exposed to sunlight or air. So those little sun freckles as we all get, yeah. <laughs> so those little sun freckles that we all get, you know, they're just, they're actually um, parts exposed to the sun. Sorry about that. <laughs> Lauren said, I'm tanning right now outside. <laughs> All right. 
And guys, if I'm going too fast or anything, we do have 39 words and definitions to go over in one hour. So it's going to be a lot. So if I'm going too fast, no worries. You can always come back and watch this video and rewind. Or if you just come in late. So number three is stains. There we go. Stains. They are abnormal brown skin patches that are circular and irregular shape. Color is due to the presence of blood pigment. So this is a little bit longer of a definition. But um, a lot of people, the little kind of nickname for these, they're called like wine stains. Um, I remember my cousin had one and my mom told me that she has a little wine stain on her. And I was like, what? And I was freaking out. And she goes, no, it's like a birthmark. But that's what it literally does look like just to paint a picture in your head. It, it looks like someone spilled red wine on you. And that's that's exactly what they look like. So number three is stains. Number four is chalasma. Chalasma is liver spots characterized by increased deposits of pigments on the skin. How many of you know someone with liver spots? No one. <laughs> They're not as common as the first two. They're not as common as the first two and they kind of look a little bit like freckles, but darker. So those are chalasma. And you may be wondering, you know, why, why are we studying this? This is for everyone's benefit, not just, not just estheticians, not just cosmos. It's for everyone's benefit. You can use this kind of language to make yourself look more professional. You know, whenever you make yourself look more professional, it is always, you will always bring more clientele in and they will trust you more if you sound professional. So that's kind of why we want you to learn these words. So that way you can, instead of saying, you have such little cute little freckles, it's so cute. You know, you can use their real word. So, all right. Number five is Nevis. It is a birthmark. It's also known as a birthmark. It's a small or large malformation of the skin due to pigmentation or dilated capillaries. A lot of people are born, born with birthmarks, so. For those of you who just joined, we're just writing the definitions to the words that Kim gave out this morning. All right. Number six is leucoderma. It is the abnormal light patches of the skin. There's one, there's two more versions of leucoderma. So there's a two different versions of leucoderma. So we're going to learn about those as well. But this is just abnormal light patches of the skin. So a part of leucoderma is vitaligo. Vitiligo, sorry. It's acquired condition of leucoderma. So it's part of, it's under the leucoderma, um, it's part of the leucoderma space, but it affects the skin and hair. Um, I know there is one famous supermodel that has it and she, um, she's, she's like an advocate for anyone who has anything with any little like flaw with their skin. So she's an advocate for that. I forgot her name though. 
Yeah, Winnie Harlow. There we go. Yes, that's her. She's gorgeous. Uh, and then we have the little bit more excessive version, and we have albinism. It is a congenial absence of melanin pigment in the skin. So their hair is going to be white. Their skin is going to be very, very pale. And even their eyes, sometimes, um, sometimes people with that skin condition, they'll, they'll have like very, very, very white milky eyes. So it is just an absence of pigment in the skin. All right, number nine is hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is abnormal increase in the size of a part or an organ. So make sure that you are, make sure you underline, especially this is a key word in here, organ, because hypertrophy deals with the increased size of an organ. It's whenever that friction, either metal from monkey bars or your own hands, and you can get a callus there to protect your skin. Can y'all hear now? I didn't mute it. It's not muted at all. It's not muted. Okay. So number 11 is mole. Okay. Number 11 is a mole. It is a small spot on the small spot on the skin. It's brown. So I, everyone knows what a mole looks like. You're just born with them. Um, sometimes some of them can be really cancerous. So make sure you get them checked out by a dermatologist. They say if you like to tan or you are out in the sun a lot to get an annual dermatologist checkup just to make sure so they can look at every single freckle and mole to make sure none of them are cancerous. All right. Number 12 is verrucula. It is a verruca. It is a wart viral infection of the epidermis can, that can be spreadable. So it's just a wart. Everyone knows what a wart is. What's weird about a wart, and a lot of people don't know this, is they can actually spread due to they are a viral infection. So you can, you can really spread them easily. Everyone, my mom used to tell me not to touch frogs because she said I would get warts from them. So I still don't touch frogs to these days. All right. 
So I heard it was someone's birthday today. Everyone, I want y'all wish a happy birthday to Chloe Long. She is in the, she is a Cosmo student in the South School. So happy birthday, Chloe. I hope you're having a great day. So everyone wish her a happy birthday. There we go. Give Chloe some love and wish her happy birthday. All right. Yeah, give her some love. Keep giving her love, everyone. Give her some birthday love. Okay, our next one is skin tags. So skin tags are bead-like fibrous tissues that stand away from the flat surface of the skin. So skin tags. Happy birthday, Chloe. Oh, I love that you are giving her so much love. She's just the sweetest little person. I love her so much. She has the coolest hairstyles, I will tell you. She, they're awesome. She told me one day she'll let me shave her head with one guard clipper, so still waiting for it. She promised me. <laughs> oh, look, she just said someday, ha, 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 I will get you. The queen of the mullet. All right. Skin, that is skin tags. All right, number 14 is broken capillaries. It, they turn blue in color and they're caused by excessive friction, heat and cold and poor circulation. So it's actually pretty easy to break capillaries. It's, no, it's not that big of a deal whenever it happens. Just make sure, I know some of you are like, whenever um, it's really, really cold, some people, they actually will, their capillaries will break. So you have to make sure of that. And also you don't want to massage heavily on a capillary that's broken. If you can see that there's anything with that wrong with the skin, like, oh, I think that might be, don't massage it. It's not good to massage. So a broken capillary. All right. Number 15, we're making good time, guys. Number 15, I'm going to keep it up here for a little bit longer because I know it's a little bit of a definition. Okay, a, number 15 is a squamous cell carcinoma. It is skin cancer that has scaly red papules where blood vessels are not seen. This cancer is more serious than basal cell carcinoma. So this is like the medium version of this type of cancer. So it's not good to have either of them. So that's why we go to the dermatologist once a year, just to make sure we don't have any of this. Because skin cancer is the one of the top cancers that people get, and they get it a lot. They got them, a lot of people have skin cancers who are older because back in like the 70s, 80s, they would always use tanning beds. So that's why a lot of people, and it's not fun to have skin cancer. I know they have to either graft skin, which is just taking skin from another body part and putting it, or they would, they just have to remove it. So they have to cut it out of your skin. It's not a great time. So make sure you're using sunscreen. Sunscreen is great. All right, number 16 is basal cell carcinoma. This is our like, it's still cancer and it's still bad, but it's like our num it's our lowest threat. So basal cell carcinoma is the most common skin cancer that is characterized by pearly nodules and visual blood vessels. 
So that's the difference between basal and squamous cell carcinoma is that squamous, you cannot see the blood vessels and basal, you can. So it's the most common, it's the least threatening. It's still threatening, but it's the least threatening. Number 17 is a malignant melanoma. It's the most dangerous skin cancer that is characterized by dark brown, black, or discolored patches of the skin. I, if you want to Google a picture of that, you can just to kind of tell the difference between basal, um, squamous, and malignant. But malignant is the worst mo and most threatening form of skin cancer. And then Baldwin said carcinoma is cancer. Yes, it is. So this is like the worst one to have of skin cancer. So the reason why I made you underline organ on um, that other one was that because we wanted to make sure that you didn't confuse this, that definition with this one. A tumor is an abnormal growth of swollen tissue, not an organ. So that's the difference between tumor and hypertrophy. Uh, they always, tumors can grow anywhere. Um, I know a girl just got diagnosed. Her tumor was cancerous. Your tumors can be cancerous or not cancerous. And it was on her brain. So she just had surgery to get it removed, but it, but she's very scared because they have to take two, they have to take a piece of that tumor and go send it off whenever they remove it to see if it was cancerous or not. So tumors can be cancerous as well. All right. Number 19 is edema. Edema is just a fancy word for swelling. It's just puffiness caused by excess, excessive fluids um, trapped in the body's tissue. So, I mean, if you wanted to, you could, if you wanted to, you can sound more professional instead of saying swelling, you could say edema. I mean, that, I think that sounds more professional to me. If someone was like, if someone told me there's edema or if they use edema, I would be like, oh, wow, what does that mean? I'll be very interested. But then they would just tell me, oh, it's just swelling. And I would be like, oh, okay. Chloe said all my pens are running out of ink, so I'm frantically switching pens. I feel you. I feel you. Oh, I know exactly how that feels or your favorite pen that you love so much is running out of ink. You're just like, no, no. Every time you write a word, it's just a tear runs down your eye. I have like favorite pins. Dima. All right, so you can say this word two different ways. You can either say canker sores, because I'm from Texas, and then you can say shanker sores. So this is the way it said in the book to say it, I, they, the book said to say shanker, like shank and R shanker. I was like, um, no, it, I, I've grown up with canker. So we're going to say canker today. So it is a sore where the syphilis infection has entered the body. So oh, we're on venereal diseases. So canker sores are basically, you do have syphilis. It's the first um, part of syphilis. So you just get a little sore. It, it kind of looks like a little whitehead, but it is syphilis. So not fun. 
That's also why we go and check. I would either go yearly or when you switch partners to go get yourself checked up. Make sure you have that clean bill of health. That is all I'm going to say about that subject. We're just going to briefly talk about this. All right. Our next word is syphilis. All right, it is a bacterial infection usually spread by sexual contact that starts as a painless sore. So it starts as a canker sore. So that is fun. And then you have syphilis. Just to let you know, syphilis is also very, very deadly. So make sure you're getting yourself checked. Make sure you're also um, bathing, you know, so. syphilis. Our next word is secondary syphilis. So this is what happens whenever you get that little sore and you're and you don't do anything with it. You're just like, I don't probably go away soon. Oh, it's fine. But, and then it comes back two weeks later as a rash. This is what secondary syphilis is. So it is a rash that develops two to eight weeks after the initial sore develops. It can be deadly. It can be a deadly infection that can spread throughout the body. So that is what is terrible about syphilis because it can actually kill you. So like I said, just make sure you're getting yourself checked. And also they can be asymptomatic, which means they can live in your bloodstream and your body without you even knowing. So that's also a good reason you might not know. Yeah. Secondary syphilis. Our next word is gonorrhea. It is the discharge and burning sensation when urinating. If left untreated, the bacteria can enter the bloodstream. So it's another bacterial, so it is another bacterial infection. And whenever you have one of these, sometimes, like I said, they can be asymptomatic, which means it does not have any symptoms. You're just kind of like living yourself a normal day. You don't feel bad. You don't feel anything, but it's still living inside of you and growing and doing a lot of damage. I know a lot of people who've gotten STDs like this or viral infections like this, and they, they had to cut completely just cut out the uterus. So that is gonna real. All right. Number 24 is allergic dermatitis. It's also known as eczema. A lot of people have eczema. It's caused by food, substances in the air, or materials the victim uses. So it can be, eczema can be caused by something you're like not super allergic to, like epi like EpiPen allergic to, but it's more of like, oh, I, my stomach gets a little upset and I get a little tiny rash whenever, you know, if someone is um, gluten-free. So that is allergic dermatitis. And also it can be substances in the air. For example, um, your skin might not like some of the chemicals that sometimes the rains bring. So, and the materials the victim uses, I know I had to sw completely switch detergents, um, liquid laundry detergent, because a lot of um, the people that I was washing clothes for, they were getting eczema and they're like, oh, why am I getting this little rash? And I'm like, oh, maybe it's the detergent. And I switched and it was all good. Thank you, seventh generation, for your laundry detergent.
a lot of people do have eczema. It's very, very, very common. All right. So definition number 25 is food allergies. It's just abnormal immune responses to food. Your body doesn't like it. A lot of people, the most common so top three um, food allergies are peanuts, shellfish, and um, a lot of people are allergic to, well, which one was it? Oh, fruits. I know the, like, I was reading this one TV show, and for some reason a commercial came on, like a mom, like, searching the internet, and she was like, you know, there's, they change the date every single time of what date you're actually supposed to kid, feed your kid peanut butter because they might be allergic to it. So that's a question. What kid, what, when do you give your kid peanut butter? And McKenna said, I'm allergic to five out of the top eight. Three. So make sure you have your EpiPens. And I do remember um, McKenna saying that they, that you should always have two EpiPens. I know they're not the cheapest, but she said one might not work. So that I've always kept that in my head. Like, Ooh, it might not work. You, you probably should use a backup. And they also say with EpiPens, make sure you have an EAP with the EpiPens. Do y'all remember what that is? EAP. Come on. I know you know. EAP. It's an acronym. It's emergency action plan. You always have to have your emergency action plan. Yes. You always want to make sure that you're at least with one person that knows how to do an EpiPen. So yeah. Yes. Emergency action plan. Good job, Alina. Yes. You always want to have it. Okay, hay fever. That is not just something the farm gets. Hay fever is actually just an allergic condition caused by plant pollens in the air. So those of you who are allergic to pollen, a lot of people um, get this whenever, I know um, my cousin gets it whenever they freshly mow and all those like grass particles and everything's in the air after someone mowed. And she will just start scratching her eyes. And I'm like, ooh, that is not good. Hay fever. They called it hay fever because whenever um, people would pick up hay, hay bales and slam them down, it would, um, it would come back up and all the hay would like get in their eyes and all the hay particles. And the people that are actually allergic to grass, that's why, they, that's why it's called hay fever. My uncle has, my uncle is actually literally allergic to grass. Or that's what he says to get out of mowing. Allergic to grass. I think it just does it to get out of mowing. Okay. Asthma. Asthma is caused by a number of allergens. It is a simple definition and that's pretty much just what it is. I know a lot of different people suffer with asthma and they have to bring an inhaler. So I would say always like have an emergency action plan with the inhaler because you know, what if you were like, I need, what if you were like, oh my gosh, I left my inhaler at home. Like if you have severe asthma, like you cannot breathe whatsoever. Ooh, Joelle said my, my allergies have been awful the last couple of day, couple of days. I feel like someone is putting a match in my eye. Girl, I'm so sorry. Oof. Yeah, since the rain has been coming through, a lot of a lot of the pollens are in the air, and especially because it's spring. So yay for high pollen count. Asthma. So this is urticaria. It is also known as hives. It's inflammation caused by an allergy to a specific drug or food. 
So that's very, very important to see on someone. Hives kind of look like big mosquito bites. I know a lot of people have been bitten by mosquitoes. So they look like huge, huge, huge mosquito bites. And they're not filled like a mosquito bite. Like mosquito bites are completely filled with fluid, but they're so big. And people get them for all different reasons. A lot of people don't go into hospital whenever they're going to the hospital when they're allergic to something, they might just get hives. So it is caused by a specific drug or food. Some people, um, my brother was allergic to yellow jackets. And so anytime a yellow jacket came near us, like he screamed, like oh, he screamed so loud, but, <laughs> but he, whenever he got, bitten by a yellow jacket, he would just get hives and he would swell really, really, really bad. He, it wasn't like hospital. Um, Kayla said hives can be caused by the heat or the cold with some people. And sometimes the cause is never found. You can actually be allergic to the heat and you can actually be allergic to the cold. So that is actually a real thing. You can be allergic to both of them. So um, I actually do know a person that's allergic to the cold. So she would break out in hives anytime she would get cold. So she'd have to wrap her whole entire face and hands just to make sure her body was completely warm. But good observation, Kayla. All right. Number 29 is drug allergies. So it's just allergic reactions to drugs and medicines. So you can be, a lot of people are allergic to penicillin. So you have to make sure that, I know some people, whenever they're allergic to stuff, like deathly allergic, they wear a little bracelet and it'll say that, that it'll say that they're allergic to penicillin and stuff like that. I know it has to have like those emergency bracelets have to have like your name. Um, and then what your, like what your medical emergency is, why you're wearing this bracelet. Oh, a lot of people are allergic to the cold, see? Yeah. Okay. All right, number 30 is dermatitis medicamentosa. It occurs after an injection of a substance such as pen penicillin. So it's a type of dermatitis. It just incurs after an injection of a substance such as penicillin, and it is also applied to dermatitis. And let me spell out um, minicomentosa because it's a long word and I might not have been able to get it all in there. So it is M E D I C A. M E N T O S A. Oh, Marina said, I actually witnessed someone in school get hives from waxing their arms immediately broke out in the hives. Yes. Some people can be allergic to wax. It just depends. And some people will never know until they do it. Like my uncle never ate a mango until he was like 40 and he's like super allergic to mangoes. Like we never even knew because he never ate anything with it or any, so. We never knew. And he's also allergic to grass. All right. Derma 31 is dermatitis venatavia. Veninatia, dermatitis veninatia. Sorry, these, these words are pretty hard. It is dermatitis that occurs as in a result of external contact with a harmful substance. 
So this is basically your rash that you get from poison ivy, from poison oak. It is, you know, anything that is very, that is harmful. You know, poison ivy and poison oak aren't great for us, so... And it's like a double whammy whenever you get poison ivy and you're allergic to poison ivy. Oof, I've seen that before. Ooh, that is not fun. Number 32 is insect stings. So... This can cause a mild or severe reaction depending on the victim. So some people are very, very, very allergic to bees stings. Oh, Aubrey says I'm highly allergic to insect stings and bites. I swell up like a balloon, even with ants. Ooh, I know that one hurts. A lot of people are allergic to insect stings. And like the definition says, depending on the victim, it can be severe or just a mild reaction. So when I know whenever I was little, my, I would get stung by a yellow jacket and my mom would just put some ointment on it and we were done. You know, make sure the stinger is out and then put ointment on and be done. And whenever my brother got bitten, ooh, he swelled up like a tomato. And it was bad. He got covered in hives and you know, I was crying because I was little itty bitty and I was like, what's wrong with mama? <laughs> so. Kayla said she has an EpiPen for ant bites. Yes. No one likes fire ants. Some ants are good. Some ants are not. So know the difference. I know the difference in your bees too. Don't kill carpenter bees. Okay, time to get into the more kind of hospital-y stuff. So if you want to tell your kids this one. Number 33 is abrasion. So it is also known as a scrape. It's just a fancy word for a scrape. So one of your kids gets a little, little strawberry, like my mom used to call them. Also known as scrape. You could be, oh my goodness, look at your abrasion. Mm. So an abrasion is a red, um, is a rough and red where the skin has been scraped or worn away. So we usually get abrasions um, because, you know, fell off a bike, fell off something and just kind of scraped the concrete. That was the best ones, I think. Oof, those strawberries would be huge whenever you fall off your bike on concrete. Oof. Yeah. So... Yeah, it is just a fancy word for a scrape. Okay, number 34 is lacerations. So a laceration is an uneven, jagged tear in the skin. So a laceration is not like you cut a knife into it. It's not like that. It is like... The only example I can give you what a laceration really is, it's like if you get caught in bob barbed wire. So, yes. A laceration is like getting caught in barbed wire, barbed wire. It's not a nice, easy, mendable. It is actually a laceration is the one most likely to leave a scar. So it's not a nice, easy, just sew it up. It's very, very hard to sew it up. So a laceration. And this isn't like a little paper cut. It's like a pretty good cut. Number 35. Oh, you're going to love this word. If you are a Dr. Pim Popper fan, you will know what this word is really quickly. Okay. So for you popaholics out there, a cyst is a sac-like elevation that contains a liquid or clear semi-solid substance. 
So those of you who are going to know about this and know about this and go on Dr. Pimple Popper's website, you will have this one. Number 35, cysts. Cysts can contain pus. They can contain a lot of different stuff. I know Dr. Pimple Poppers, whenever she pop a cyst, it's like, like grated Parmesan cheese just coming out of there. So a cyst. A few more to go guys and then we're all good. Okay, number 36 is a fissure. It is a narrow opening or furrow in the skin. A fissure. Katie said, I used to have really bad cystic acne. It was the worst. Yes, I used to have it too, girl. Don't don't feel bad. Like I would I had it so bad. I would have it on my I had it on my chest, my back, the inner parts of my arms like all the way down my back. It was so bad. It was on my face, my neck. Ugh. So I feel you on that one. Okay. So an incision is what you think of it is a uh, it is a cut or incised wound made by a knife or a sharp instrument. So an incision they make an incision whenever they are using a scalpel for surgery. Scalpel, scalpels are like very 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 sharp knives. I mean they can cut anything. It's really scary actually how sharp <laughs> scalpels are. So incision. Oh, Promise said a good example of a fissure is chapped lips. I love that. I love that example, Promise. Thank you. That is a really, I love that. Thank you for that example. So 37 is incision. All right, 38 is scar. So a lot of people have a lot of different scars. I know if we just stayed on here for like four hours and just told everyone the story of every single scar, I bet we'd be here for days. But a scar, there's always a fun story behind a scar, is a mark left on the skin after the healing of a wound. So it's it's whenever you're, because whenever, Whenever you get a cut, like a little paper cut, what happens is that the body goes into kind of like, oh, there's a cut. So they send white blood cells, red blood cells to help mend it. Well, let's say you get a lap and it'll mend pretty easily if you just have a little tiny cut, you know, a little paper cut. It'll just go. Bloop. But let's say you have a big laceration all the way down your arm. Your skin is trying to be. Your skin is trying to go back together, but it can't go back together super pretty because, you know, there might be skin missing. So we try with, you know, sutures and everything to suture it back up, but sometimes it can't be completely perfectly in line. So it leaves a bad scar. 38 is scar. And our last term, y'all made it through the, to the last one. Good job for all of you. Our last word is nodule. And if you have any, if you want to say anything about, um, comment anything about the words, you know, Promise had a great comment. So if you want to keep commenting some of those great little tad bits of information, you can. It always helps out. Nodule is a small, not like node between the surface of the skin, a nodule. Nodule. And 
that is our last definition. Now, listen carefully to the directions that we are going to do. So, South School students, you are going to turn your um, definition, word and definitions, with um, Molly. South School students, you are going to turn in your words and definitions with Molly. All North School students, every single North School students, you are going to email yours to Katie. So South School, Molly, North School, Katie. And this is due at 1.30 p.m. today. So I'm letting you guys go a few minutes early. So that way you can get all of these 39 definitions to send to Molly or Katie today, okay? And remember, they must be handwritten, no typing. Have to be handwritten, okay? So I love you guys, and I will see y'all later. Thank you for being with me today. Remember, South School turns into Molly. North School turns into Katie. They have to be turned in by 1.30 p.m. today. No, nothing later, okay? Bye. And don't forget to do final roll call as well.